rendering a list with the help of components is awesome. But of course, it would be nicer if the user could interact with our application. Otherwise, our app is somewhat boring. So long story short, our app needs to respond to events. For example, when the user clicks the button, submits the form and rest of the good stuff. So up next, let's talk about how we can handle events in React. Now, let me right away, bring the cold bucket of water and just say that all our examples will focus on logging stuff. Yes, that's going to be the case, simply because we have not covered what is state in React and what hook we use to control the state. And therefore, we really can't change what we currently see on a screen. Don't worry, all of that is coming up. Now let's just focus on the main points. And essentially, if you're a little bit familiar with vanilla JS, you know that effectively the setup is following. We have some kind of button, form, input, whatever. Then we select that element and we can add event listener. And I guess the most common or basic or however you want to say it is the click event. So we have the event, we pass the name, and then we have the callback function. In the callback function, we can access the event object, which contains a bunch of cool stuff. For example, the element we're selecting, what value is inside of it, and of course, a bunch of other things. And also, we can do something when that event takes place. And when it comes to React, essentially the setup is extremely similar. We have an element, and of course, in our case, that element is located in the JSX, in the component. We have an event. And remember when we talked about the camel case? This is the time when we'll write on click instead of click, like we have been doing in vanilla JS. And then the callback function. Basically, a functionality we want to invoke when that event fires. Now, if you want to see all of the available events in React, you can follow this link. So let me copy this one just to showcase. But I strongly suggest not memorizing all of them because list is quite long. And essentially, if you'll ever need to use a specific event, you can always go there and get the exact syntax. The idea for all of them is the same. Again, element, event, and a function. And notice over here how basically we're passing in the reference. So we go back to a JavaScript land, we set up the curlies, and same how we reference the variable, now we're referencing the function. And like I mentioned before, in all our examples, we'll invoke alert or log, just because we haven't covered how we can control what we can see on a screen. All of that is coming up. And I can also say that during the course, mostly we'll use these three. So on click, which responds to click events on submit, which fires off when the user submits the form and on change, which fires off when the user is providing value in the input. Again, I strongly, strongly suggest not memorizing all of them over here. I mean, in my opinion, it's a waste of your time. If you'll ever have some kind of specific use case, you can come back over here, you can get the exact name for that event, and you're good to go. Because again, the idea for all of them is going to be exactly the same. And once we have covered the general setup, now let's create event examples component, which I'm going to render above the books one. And the reason why I'm doing that is because eventually we'll just have the books. So this one will stay for your reference. And of course, since you have the readme, I'll be able to remove the event examples. So in the event examples, we want to set up a section form with heading two, so some kind of title, I guess. 
input and we want to go with the button with the on click now let's not worry about these functions for now as well as the name of the event over here let's just set up the basic return so essentially let's just worry about the jsx we are returning so let me navigate to index.js and i think i'm going to do it right after the book list because like i just said i am going to eventually remove it anyway so why not i'm going to go with const and then let's name this event examples so that is going to be my component inside of it for now let's just go with the return just so we can see that everything has been set up correctly so let's go with heading one and then i'll say events let's save that and then we want to go back to the book list and effectively we want to do that before the books so this is really up to you if you want to set it up here in the bottom that's also an option but in my case i'm going to go above and i'm just going to access the event examples now if you want to place them side by side in a book list then of course just remember that we need to use that react fragment or div or whatever because there has to be one element that we're returning and also keep in mind that i'm placing this in a section because there is already some css so if you won't place it inside of the section then effectively it's just going to be hanging out here on the left top corner so let me save it i have here events so i'm good to go and as a quick sign note this is usually what i do i mean i'm not returning a hitting one each and every time but i always like to set up my component so i know that definitely it's being rendered on a screen there's no point to set up the entire logic and then start chasing some weird bugs if let's say the initial setup was wrong so in order to avoid chasing my own tail i usually start by rendering something on a screen and then once i can clearly see that i mean the component setup is correct then we can move on and start adding the logic over here hopefully this wasn't too long of the explanation and now let's just set up that return where basically we want to go with another section then inside of the section let's right away go with form now we don't need the action here usually if you go with them it right away gives you an action just as a side note as far as the heading two we'll say typical form and then we want to go with input for now it's going to be a text input but i just want to add a little bit of inline styles so let's go with style it's an object and then let's say margin one rems usually we won't do that we won't add the inline styles but this is the case where i thought it's a great example of using such approach and then let's also go with name and we'll set up the example just because i want to showcase something in the following videos and as far as the value i'm going to go with example so we know that in html we can add name attributes to the inputs and in the following videos i'll show you how we can access them in react and then right outside of the form let's set up that button as far as the value i'm just going to go to click me so we have our setup and now let's just reiterate what i covered i guess five minutes ago where basically we have these events so if we want to respond to user typing something in the input the event name is on change and this is the case where we cannot just simply come up with our own names yes they need to match exactly and if we want to respond to click events we simply go here with on click and then we need to pass in the reference so we need to set up those functions again they can be inside of the component they can be outside of the component they can be coming from another file that part is irrelevant we just need to pass those functions as a reference and then every time that event is going to fire guess what react is going to execute the functionality we have inside of the reference function i'm not going to be particularly original i'm just going to say handle form input handle button click yes in react world this is somewhat typical essentially to start the name with handle but again it's not a rule so let's go back to index.js let's go above the return 
and let's come up with those two functions. Now, of course, we can pass them interchangeably. As long as you have the reference function, you can pass the same one in the input as well as the button click, but most likely you will have some specific logic for the input or for the button click. So let's go here with handle form. Sorry, not for, but form input. For now, we're going to go with pretty basic arrow function and we'll simply go log and we'll say handle form input. Then we'll copy and paste and we'll just change some stuff around. So it's not going to be handle form input. We'll say handle button click. And instead of log, why don't we go with alert? Let's save that. And then, like I said, the event to handle form inputs is on change. We go to any input, in our case, this one, the text one, and we go with on change. So every time user is going to type something in the input, the event will fire. And yes, this functionality will be executed. So we go here with handle form input. So we pass the reference and we want to do same thing here with the button. In this case, though, the event name is on click. What do we do? We pass here the reference handle button and click. Let's just make sure that the name is exact. And let me open up the dev tool since there's going to be some console logs. As a side note, you know what? I think I can remove this sucker for now, the props one. If we'll need to use it later, of course, uh, we'll uncomment it. So let's try that out with the button. Check it out. The moment I press, I have handle form input. And of course, it's because I didn't change the name. My apologies. So in here, we want to go with handle and then button click. Of course, you can leave the same one, but just so you can see that I'm not messing with you, I'm going to go with click the correct one. And of course, we want to press OK, OK. And then let's click one more time. Handle button click. Awesome. So we can see that this functionality works. And the same is going to be with our input. If I'm going to go here and start typing. Notice. In the console, I have these logs, which means that again, we're responding to the events. And as a result, of course, our application is more dynamic. And again, you'll need three things. You'll need an element, you'll need an event, and you can always find all of the events in React Docs. And lastly, you need a reference to a function or a callback function that you're going to invoke once the event takes place or fires off.